Hi guys, it's MJ and in this video we're going to go through Excel and I'm going to show you how to extract the cohorts. So let's say we have a life table. Okay, we have a life table and it's got various years. So let's say 2000, 2001 and 2002 and let's say we have our ages 20, 21, 22, 23 and 24. And what we normally get in a life table is the amount of people alive, um, you know, some amount of people who are age 20 alive at the date 2000. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in some reference numbers. So normally you would actually see um, proper proper values here, like their various lives. Like you can see lives don't normally increase. But why I'm doing this is I'm going to show you um, 22, 23, and let's make that 32, 33, and then we're going to make this 42, 43, and we're going to make this 52, 53. Okay, so this is our life table. Okay, we've got a little life table, and let's say we now want to get the cohorts. Okay, so we want to get the cohorts um, for these various years. So we can actually just copy paste this over here. Um, now the cohorts are quite a difficult thing to extract in Excel because the cohorts are is when you you take an age group and you follow them throughout time. So these twenty year olds over here are the twenty one year olds in two thousand one. They are the twenty two year olds in two thousand and two. So kind of like they kind of like follow this this type of pattern. So what we want to do is we want to extract the diagonals. So these guys over here would be a different um, cohort, and these guys over here would be, let's use green, uh, would be a different cohort like that. So this is the yellow one here. How do we get these numbers over here? How do we get them going down? And um, I mean, maybe we should, we should have 2003, 2004 as well, um, just to have some more numbers. 24, 25, 34, 35, 44, 45, and then 54, 55. Okay, so we want to get we want to get um, these yellow lines over here. Now, I mean, you could go and type them out. I mean, that is one possible way. But when you're dealing with life tables, it's very likely you could have like 30 years over here. You could have you know, 80 ages. So to do that, it's going to take up a lot of your time. Um, so is there a quick way that you can do it for, for all of them? So, well, fortunately we do, and that is going to be the point of this video. So what I'm going to be using is something known as the index function. Okay. So the index function, uh, we select an array. Actually, before I do that, a very good thing to do is if you're going to be using an array, I like to give it a name. So let's call it data. Um, we call it data and then that way in the formula, we don't have to put all those dollar signs and all that type of stuff with Excel. So we just go index and then we want data. And then you can see we kind of want uh, column one, row one. And then we'd go index, okay, data, and now we want row two, row two. And you can see we can start generating all of those. But what we've seen is that there is a bit of a pattern. Each time they are increasing by one. So what we can do is the following. We can use our row information in order to calculate these numbers over here. So what do I mean by that? So if I say we're dealing with age uh, 20 as our smallest. So if we go negative 19 plus and we go here, we want to fix it on B. We don't mind if it moves down the columns. So we're going to put the dollar sign there. And then our column is, we can also have, say, negative one, well, negative 1999 plus, oh, so what, before we do that, let's just make it, make it simple. Um, this is a little bit tricky. But let's see if we can, oh, I'm sliding down. 
Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, so we got 11, and now we want to see... Oh, okay, that's great. So what you can see what we're doing here is we're using these values um, in order to be our index positions in order to return it um, in the array. But the problem with this is that if I now drag across, okay, it doesn't work. Okay, you can see they're giving me the same results. So what I want to do, we want to clear this over here, I want to use also my year. So let's actually just take away the color. So over here, I want 1, 1. But over here, I'm going to want 1, 2. Okay, so we can't really use this formula here. Well, we can if we just modify it slightly. So let's go 1999 plus 2000. Okay, now we want to fix it on the row. So we'll put the dollar sign there. Okay, let's just see if this still works for us. Okay, it doesn't. It has messed everything up. Um, how do we get around this? Let's just see if we put a dollar sign there. Oh no, of course not, because what it's going to be doing is we want the column to also change as well. So we can't actually do that. So what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Uh, I should have prepared better for this video. Um, but this is the whole thing. You have to you have to figure things out as you go about them. So let's actually stick with our B15. And now let's actually um, let's add something else as well. So let's make this minus 20 plus we want the 2000 minus 1999. Is that going to work? Let's see. Let's see if this is going to work. We want to fix the column. Um, we want to fix the 14. That's what we want to fix. Okay, so let's see if that works. Okay, that has worked. And because we can see all the yellow numbers are over there, so we've got all our little yellow numbers. Okay, now what I want to see. I want to see 1, 2, I want to see 2, 3, I want to see 3, 4, I want to see 4, 5. Then I'm going to be a very happy chap, and these should be should give errors because they don't actually have the value, so they'll go ref. Okay, let's see, does this work? Oh, fantastic, fantastic. So we actually have figured this thing out. Um, so actually, let me just show you here with the orange. So these orange values here are popping up over here. And these yellow numbers over there are popping up over there. And then if we had made this a blue, this is where the blue numbers would have been. So what we've done is we've extracted the cohort. Um, and how we've done it is we've used the index function. So the index function is very important. We're always using the same uh, data. So I've given that um, a name reference. And then what I've done is you could see it took a little bit of thinking, um, but you had to kind of see the sequence, what was what was being required, and then adjust that sequence using either the, the names of your columns um, or the names of your rows. And this is going to be different depending if you're starting at age 80 or if the, the years are every five years or something like that. You're going to have to figure that part out by yourself. But with a little bit of practice and a little bit of trial and error, you can see that we've able we've been able to extract the cohorts from our life table. And this is going to save you a lot of time when, like I said, when it's like 30 years projected and you have something like 80 years. This is going to be a big time saver um, if you can work out this little formula there. Anyway, that is the, the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll probably be making a few more um, Excel for Actuary videos. So click subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks guys. Cheers.